All right, my YouTube friends, welcome back. Uh, guys, I am sorry, it has been uh, a little bit of time since I've made my last video. I also haven't been watching as many of your videos as I would like and I normally would. Uh, I've been moving house um, and I haven't had the internet other than um, uh, uh, on my mobile phone, uh, but that's all going to change soon. I'm in the new house and the internet's coming soon. Um, but today we have a tale for you in these uh, cold, dark nights. Uh, we gather around the fire uh, and we tell a tale. Uh, so we do have the fire for you today. Uh, that's the fire there. Um, that's the gold chain that I've uh, uh, showed you guys on a different video. Uh, it's all about gold, baby gold. Um, we have the fire and the tale is going to be George and the Dragon. Uh, for our gold project, we're going to fill uh, 20 coins, fill up this tube with 22 millimeter air tights fitting mainly our gold sovereigns and other coins that also fit the 22 millimeter air tights. Uh, and we have um, another coin for you. So we had the 1899 uh, sovereign. Uh, which one is this? Yep, that's the 1899 that we've already showed you. Uh, we had uh, 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 Queen Victoria's uh, grandson uh, on the uh, Prussian, uh, the German Empire. Uh, uh, 20 marks gold coin right there with that beautiful, beautiful, um, uh, obverse. Um, but there he, he is there on the, uh, reverse, Wilhelm, uh, the second. Um, and today we have for you the next year after the 1899 comes the 1900. Uh, that's it there. And you'll see that both of these have exactly the same design. Uh, that's, uh, St. George and the Dragon uh, uh, St. George is killing that dragon, uh, right there, same one on the new coin for this week, uh, the 1900, um, and most of these sovereigns, um, pretty much all of them have that design on their obverse, there is a few that have a, a different design, but they stick with this design mainly, uh, it is a pretty beautiful and pretty cool design, so I thought that's what we should focus on this week, that's the new one from the 1900, uh, here. Um, uh, which also has Queen Victoria uh, on the back, but there's St. George killing the dragon. So I thought, where, you know, where does this design come from? Is it just some beautiful design that some designer at the Mint uh, hundreds of years ago made? Um, or is there a story behind it? And there is a story. Uh, the story, the tale, is St. George and the dragon. Uh, so gather round, uh, my pretties, uh, gather round the fire on this uh, cold cold dark night we will light the fire right there um gather around the campfire and we will tell the tale of st george and the dragon so uh there he is right there so st george uh that guy is in his late 20s uh, uh and he is a roman soldier now this story at it, look nowadays it's a, a christian story it became a christian story uh, sometime in the 11th century apparently according to my research uh, but the story is much older and has origins uh, uh in other stuff um so i guess that part might be controversial i'm not even christian so definitely don't take this as a religious story and as gospel from me specifically you can go uh to your uh, religious people uh, if you want that. But I'm just going to tell the story in general um, that I've looked up here. So, yeah, so that's a Roman soldier, uh, St. George. Um, I don't know if he was called saint at this point um, in the story. Uh, but, yeah, he's uh, he's risen in the ranks. He's a brave soldier. Um, and he's come into the town of Selene. Now, in Selene, there is a dragon. Uh, that's the dragon on the ground there being killed by St. George. Um, and if you think about it, I mean, uh, you know, I'm thinking, where is the RSPCA in all this? I mean, uh, PETA maybe uh, for a few uh, um, Americans. Um, because, I mean, you know, certainly this is going to be an endangered animal. I mean, has that dragon done anything wrong? I mean, sure, he probably, you know, eats some sheep and maybe a few people here or there, but they, you've all got to eat. I mean, same as a tiger or a lion. This isn't cool to be killing a dragon. Why are we still minting these coins about killing some, you know, some, uh, some you know, creature here? You know, an amazing creature, magical creature, a, a, a dragon. But this is not such a nice dragon, okay? He, 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 he's not good news. So basically, in the town of Selene, this dragon is there. He's by their water source, by the spring where they get their water, the only place where they can get their water. Um, and uh, and look, the people can either starve or die of thirst, I guess, in its water. 
um, or they uh, they can feed this dragon and sort of pay it off. So they have been feeding it sheep, and they've been sh feeding this dragon sheep every single day. Um, but I mean, you run out of sheep. There's only so many sheep that you have in this town of Selene. Uh, and this dragon, he you know he 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 demands his fill. Um, it's got to eat, you know. Uh, a dragon's got to eat. Um, so, uh, so basically he starts going after people. Now there's different versions of the story, um, but in a lot of the versions we're talking kids and specifically virgins he's going after. Now that sounds, uh, very dramatic to me, virgins, so we're going to stick with virgins, uh, and that, and, and, uh, <laughs> that version of the story. So the dragon, he's going after the virgins, um, and, you know, you don't want to have to give out your, uh, your virgins, your daughters, your future girlfriends and wives and stuff to this dragon, and he's just going to eat them and kill them. It's not very cool. Um, but you don't really have a choice. So in the town, uh, what they did is something I think is pretty amazing. They drew up, uh, lots. Um, uh, so they had a lottery of who is going to be, uh, uh, sacrificed to the dragon. Um, and, uh, this is pretty modern thinking, I reckon, uh, uh, for, uh, you know, back, uh, I think St. George is supposed to have died at, like, you know, the year 303. So, I mean, we're talking 1700 years ago. We've got no class warfare going on here. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor or even if you're the king, um, everyone's, uh, daughters or the virgins, uh, non-married daughters, uh, names is going in this lottery, um, and, uh, and is getting picked, um, uh, uh from in the lottery to who's going to be sacrificed next to this dragon. Uh, it's the only way, uh, to appease the dragon, still be able to get your water source and have the rest of the town survive. Um, and at first the people complain, they don't like this, I mean, it's, it's not exactly a great situation here, um, but after a while, uh, they are scared, and they're basically just sitting at home, all isolated from one another, waiting to see who is going to be picked next, um, who is going, uh, to be fed to the dragon next, uh, which I think we can kind of, uh, imagine in today's times. I mean, um, we are all sitting at home, uh, scared, just seeing what's going to happen next, basically, uh, with this beer flu. Um, and I do like that even the, uh, the king's daughter is in the lottery, um, because everyone's got to pay their tax, or got to pay their daughter, I guess. Uh, even the president, I mean, the king, sorry, has got to pay their uh, tax. I mean, virgin. Um, anyway, uh, I wonder if any of you picked up on what I meant uh, by that there. Um, and of course, uh, as you would imagine, uh, as the next thing in the story goes, it was the king's daughter, the king's virgin daughter that came up in the lottery. <gasps> oh, no. Um, and, uh, what, what can he do? I mean, that's the rule. Her name's in there. And they said, you know, even the king's daughter, uh, uh, goes in this lottery. Everybody does, rich or poor, um, nobleman or peasant. Um, and, uh, and he begged them, come on, I'll give you guys money and stuff, uh, you know, uh, 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 please. And they're like, nah, mate, you've got to put her in. That's, that's the rule. We've all, you know, had our daughters had to go in, in the lottery. So it's, it's your daughter. She's going to the dragon. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, but they let her have, you know, have some time with him. Um, he could say goodbye and stuff. And the day came and she was coming up against this dragon right here. Um, uh, there's a good, uh, picture of the dragon there. Um, so anyway, uh, there she was and up came this, uh, St. George guy on his horse. Um, and who doesn't love, you know, when the, uh, the guy turns up the knight, uh, in shining armor, literally, uh, in shining armor. Um, and he wants to know what's going on. He finds out and he's like, no, I can't have this. I'm going to save you. So the knight in shining armor has got to get the princess. I mean, we love this story. I've been hearing this story, uh, since Nintendo when I was a little kid, uh, Super Mario, mate. Uh, he, he, you know, he's after the princess. Um, and that's what you want. Um, so he came up against this dragon and he's, you know, shielding the fire. He's, he's putting his shield up to, uh, to evade the fire. Uh, and he drives that sword that you can see there in his right hand straight into the shoulder of the dragon. Now, this is a magical dragon. They've got, you know, scales that are pretty impressive. It didn't even pierce the, uh, the, uh, scales. Uh, but the dragon was still in pain from this blow to his shoulder. He recoiled in pain. Um, and they had a moment. Uh, so St. George calls out to the princess. Princess, throw your girdle. It's like a belt, like a virgin underwear belt thing that the princess has uh, at the dragon. And she does quick smart. She doesn't waste any time. Uh, and amazingly, that belt and that girdle uh, gets caught uh, around the neck of the dragon. 
Um, so, um, so instantly when that happens, uh, wouldn't you believe it? The dragon, uh, is amazingly, uh, uh, becomes docile, um, like a pet, um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and basically is, uh, is doing whatever they want. Um, as soon as that girdle wraps around the, uh, the neck of the dragon. Um, so they take the, uh, the dragon by the, uh, by the collar, I guess, with the girdle, with it around the neck, into the town, and in front of everyone, St. George slays that dragon. The town people are happy, everyone, uh, I imagine they have a big feast and festivities and such, uh, and it depends which version of the story, but I like the version of the story where he marries a princess. I mean, you got to get the girl after you save the girl, right? Uh, certainly, you know, he's worthy of that. I mean, if it wasn't for him, you know, she'd be dragon meat. Um, so that's the story of St. George and the Dragon. It's been around for a long, long time. Uh, you know, some people say it's an allegory to different things. Um, it's become a Christian tale, even though it has even earlier origins. Um, and that's what they have on the uh, Sovereign they've had for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and that's St. George and the Dragon. So that's my third uh, coin there uh, from the project. Um, so I guess I'm 15% of the way there. I hope you guys like that story. Uh, I'll be bringing you a lot more gold soon and more tales from history uh, and other good things. So like, share and subscribe. Uh, and that was uh, St. George and the Dragon, um, the tale gathered around the fire. Uh, thanks, guys. Speak to you again soon.